Okay. If you frequent Tumblr or any sort of body positivity or even feminist sort of website or what have you, you probably run into fat activism or FAs, as they are getting called pretty much. Fat activism and FAs, if you don't know, are basically people who believe that being morbidly obese, obese, fat, or overweight in any shape, way, or form should be completely accepted, viewed as attractive, and not deemed a health concern. A lot of people, including fat activists, are trying to lump them in with body positivity. Now, what body positivity is, is loving yourself and accepting, well, loving your body, and loving your body regardless of its flaws. However, you cannot lump fat activism in with body positivity because body positivity is loving your body. Part of loving your body is looking after it. Now, being obese means you have not looked after your body. So, fat activism is in fact anti-body positivity, because if it was pro-body positivity, it would not support the idea of being unhealthy and treating your body badly, which it does. Now, these people are basically deluded. <laughs> they think that being obese is oppressed, which it's not. They think that they get treated in the same way that people who are of color or different sexualities get treated, which is utter fucking crap. No one got lynched for being fat, as far as I know. So, yeah, that's just a bunch of fucking crap in that regards. Um, and what they're pushing for is for doctors to not allow to be making medical diagnoses or really making any sort of comment whatsoever about a person's weight. So basically, they can't tell you the reason why you're getting diabetes happens to be that you weigh three, four hundred pounds more than you should, which is in fact the cause of your diabetes. They're not allowed to tell you that anymore because it's sizest, which is crappy. Because that's the word they basically created, is if you're not attracted to someone because they're obese, you're sizest. If you think that obese people shouldn't be able to take up two bus seats, you're sizest. If you point out that, hey, there's medical problems with being obese, oh, guess what, now you're sizest. Basically, these people have made up a bunch of oppression crap and are trying to make it so that being obese is protected under law. And if you go and say, oh, I don't think fat people are attractive, then everyone will turn to you and go, oh, what the fuck's wrong with you? Basically. But in reality, nobody should be attracted to obese people because it is not healthy. It doesn't make a lot of sense for someone to be attracted to something that isn't healthy. And not telling a patient why they are ill because of their health is bad for the patient. So it doesn't really help anybody at all, but there is actually a TV show that is actually pretty good when it comes to this sort of shit. It's um, Super Size vs. Super Skinny. It's a UK, UK TV show, and basically it shows someone who is overweight with someone who is underweight. Basically, they swap diets. But the overweight person goes to America <laughs> to meet someone who is morbidly obese or like beyond morbidly obese to the point where they can't walk or they can't clean themselves, like, it's pretty bad. And uh, during that, you get to see the really bad, bad diets and just the oversized portions in America, which is insane. But it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that most FAs are from America, from what I've noticed, anyway. But that goes hand in hand with the fact that America has a lot of obese people. It is one of the fattest countries simply because of poor dieting, too much fast food, and just the massive sizes that everything comes in. Like, on the Super Size vs. Super Skinny show, when they go out to eat in America, the portion sizes are freaking massive, and they always order a ton of freaking food. Like, cream pie is, like, stacked like this freaking big. It's got so much goddamn cream, it's disgusting. But, anyway... <laughs> so, fat activists... They're causing a lot of problems, to be honest. Hopefully they will get ignored by anyone of intellect and sanity. But as the world gets more obese, which at the current rate the world is going to get more obese, fat activism is going to gain more power and more people are going to get involved in it and more people are going to get their views of beauty and healthness distorted because of this crap. And on top of it, they're giving out a lot of, I guess you could say, false information. Basically, they're starting to put out studies claiming that there's nothing wrong or unhealthy with being overweight, or that being overweight is the true 
beauty standard and shit like that. Unfortunately, you have young kids seeing this. Overweight young kids in a lot of places, and they go, Oh, look at this! Guess there's nothing wrong with being overweight. I'm just gonna eat 20 more Twinkies. Twinkies still exist in Canada. They still exist here, so there are still kids who eat Twinkies here. But, you're gonna have that, and it's just... It's such a... just ugh. It's not good for kids to be seeing, or older people, because... And it would probably really annoy most doctors who saw this shit. They'd be sitting there like, no, just no. And on top of it, fat activism is basically feeding into the whole feedy lifestyle. If you don't know what a feedy or a feeder is, basically it's sort of a fetish thing where you have someone who's really overweight, someone who might be overweight, might not be, their weight really doesn't matter, and that person will continuously feed the person who's overweight and will just watch that person get fatter. And basically they find it hot, sexy to make that other person get as big as possible, and that person wants to get as big as possible. There is actually a, a feeder on one episode of Super Size vs. Super Skinny, and it's just so gross. <laughs> and it does actually really piss off Dr. Christian. It, it does piss him off. And I don't blame him, because it is really, really gross. And they basically ignore the health concerns of it. But this whole fat activism thing, it basically, they are obviously involved in it. Because they don't want their lifestyle being seen as disgusting or fetishy or gross when it totally is. But now, of course, there is the other side of the coin with this, which is called proana. Proana is basically proanorexia, basically encouraging people to eat as little as possible to, you know, throw up and whatnot. But everybody pretty much knows, except for the people involved with proania, that this is unhealthy, that this is bad, and no one supports it except for the few deluded people that do. With fat activism, pretty much a shit ton of people are starting to support it, even though it makes no damn sense. And if you go on Tumblr, when you log in to, pro if you go on the ProAna tag, it will pop up this little thing that asking you, hey, are you okay? Are you sure you want to continue with this? Here's a link to so-and-so's doctor or whatever. Here, get some help. Whereas if you go on to fat activism or pro-obesity or any of that sort of thing, nothing's going to pop up like that at all. And that's kind of like, no, both of them are unhealthy. Both of them should have little warning, hey, are you okay? And both of them are disgusting and unhealthy and not okay. And it should be seen as that way, but it's not. And that is partly because there is so many obese people in the world right now. We are getting to a point where it's going to eventually be there's more obese people than fit or normal weight people. We are getting to that point. Which isn't a good thing. That's, that's a terrible thing. <sighs> Especially if we get to a point where all of a sudden, oh, guess what? Food famine. Shit. We don't have enough food in the world anymore. What are we gonna do? But this is a problem for medical reasons as well, because with hospitals, due to the sheer amount of overweight people now, they're having to bring in things like lift teams, um, make bigger doors. Scanners are not big enough to fit the obese people. We have coffins that aren't large enough. We need coffin plots that are bigger. Cremation places need to be enlarged. I mean, it's just... And then, of course, you have to make bigger wheelchairs, ambulances that can haul bigger people, and it's just costing a fuck ton out of the healthcare system. So it's not just the fat people themselves that are affected by their fatness. They are affecting the medical system, they are affecting taxpayers, they are affecting the food that is given out, making it harder to find healthier, normal-sized portion food for people with proper eating. And then fat activists are just making it worse, because they don't want being fat as being seen to be bad. So they don't want any of those anti-obesity campaigns, or feed your kids well, or those get fit ads, because they deem that all to be fat shaming. <laughs> and then you're not supposed to be like... Oh, you would look so much better if you lost a little bit of weight, or you're 700 pounds, you need to go on a diet, says your doctor. They're like, no, no, don't listen to that doctor, he's a fat shaming cunt, don't listen to him, he's a terrible fucking person, you're perfectly great the way you are. Whereas they'll also turn around to a thin person and say, eat a fucking hamburger, you're too thin, being thin is disgusting, being thin is horrible. Why would you want to date a bag of bones which you could have a big old bag of meat? Which doesn't even make sense, because that's where the whole, um, the guys don't want, dogs like bones, guys like meat sort of thing came from, is from the fat activists, but with that in itself, it doesn't make a lot of sense, because 
Meat is not what a fat person has. What they have is fat. A lean person, a fit person, has lots of meat on their bone because they have lots of muscle, because that's what meat is, muscle. So a fit person has more meat on them than a fat person does. A fat person has more fat on them, and nobody really generally likes the fat. Especially, I'm sorry, fat disgusts me on food as well as on bodies. Just, ew. Wow, this is actually going on for a while. <laughs> Ten minutes in. <laughs> but, yeah. So that that's, that's pretty much fat activism. It's stupid. It's not body positivity in any shape, way, or form. Um, it has nothing to do with feminism either. It has nothing to do with feminism. Anyone who claims it does is a moron and needs to actually educate themselves about feminism, body positivity, and fat activism because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Anyone who says fat activism is a good thing is a, also a moron. If you support fat activism, I highly suggest you stop it and do some actual research on being healthy and on fat activism in itself because you might just not know what it's about. But, yeah. But, oh, yeah, fat activism. With it, a lot of people try to say that it's always oh, just about the people who are just slightly overweight. It's not. It's not. It's basically glorifying obesity. That's all it is. It's glorification of obesity. Trying to make city buses have bigger bus seats. Cats growling at each other. And there actually was a huge debate where some fat activism was bitching and moaning about how airplane bus seats were big enough and how she was getting pissed off that the skinny mini next to her was complaining about her fat splurging into her seat. First off, you only paid for one fucking seat. You don't- you're not allowed to go into somebody else's seat. That's their personal space. Don't intrude on other people's personal space because you can't take care of your own damn body. Don't do that. That's not right. Second off, Airplanes have weight limits. They can only handle so much weight on them. Same goes for buses and cars. There is a weight limit. And you shouldn't push it over. Um, but, yeah. And with anyone who's trying to sit around and claim that being obese is healthy, just tell them to watch Super Size vs. Super Skinny or any of the hundreds of others that are about, you know, body sizes and whatnot. Because they will give you at least some insight medically. <laughs> at least, hopefully, anyway, if you pay any attention to them. Well. <clears throat> so, yeah, but... Yeah, so... Fat activism. 